This is tutorial 1-2, Navigate ArcGIS Pro. In the GIS tutorial 1 for ArcGIS Pro workbook. I'm starting off from the tutorial 1-1 so what I'm going to do is go to the project tab then go to open and I'm going to click on browse and I'm going to open the tutorial 1-2 project file. I'm gonna save any changes to my tutorial 1-1 and I'm going to zoom to full extent using the globe symbol. In the map I'm going to click on the westernmost MedExpress clinic. When I do this pop-up opens uh, I can increase the size so I don't have to deal with the little scroll bar and here we have some information on it, the name, the address, the city, the state, the zip code, as well as a link. And If I click on that, it will bring me to that website in a browser. You're going to want to move the pop-up window somewhere to the side so it's not blocking the view of the map. And the pop-up window has a few tools that we can use. It has a toggle selection of this feature on the active map or scene, so if we click on that, you can see that it will be selected. So if you walk away from your monitor, you come back and you forget which one you're actually looking at, you can click this on and off. You could also flash this feature on the map. Uh, this is not permanent like the, the first one where it stays on. This one will just flash briefly then turn back off. And then finally you have the zoom to this feature on the active map or scene. And if we click on it, it zooms us to it. And if we click on it again, it zooms us again. So if I click again, it zooms me in. And you can see that some of the layers got turned off. If I keep going in, we can see the name. Street names have popped up. Once you're done exploring this, you just close the pop-up window and go back to full extent. You're going to want to put your cursor right kind of where the, the three rivers meet. And then you're going to scroll in using the, the scroll wheel on your mouse. And as we scroll in, again, you're going to see how things are changing. In the table of contents, as shown in the previous tutorial, layers that have visibility limitations based on scale turn gray when they're not viewed. So we can see that the buffers are both grayed out as is the population density. And if we come down here to streets, streets is visible. If we go out one, streets is now grayed out and our buffers are back to being uh, the darker color for their, their check mark. If you click and hold you can drag the map around and pan. This is a bit different from ArcMap where you had to go and select the pan tool. Normally the element tool was the primary tool. In this one, the explore is the default. And if you hover over it, you can see that it will tell you the different functions. Another interesting feature is if you have a touch screen and monitor, you can actually tap and slide the map to pan. As with Arc Map, you can also use the previous extent as well as the next extent to kind of go back and forth the previous views. Uh, when you're done with this, just click the full extent and that brings us back to our overall view. Next we're going to go over to the table of contents and we're going to turn on and off a few feature classes. In ArcMap you had the option of right clicking the layers uh, data frame and turning everything on or turning everything off. In this one it doesn't seem like we have that. Instead what they have is if you hold the control key and press a checkbox it turns them all off. And if I hold the control key again and click on one, it turns them all on. 
So I'm going to hit control on my keyboard and then make it to where they're all checked off. And then we're going to turn on track centroids, Pittsburgh, Allegheny County, Streets, and the Poverty Index. So you should have a map that looks similar to this. The directions in the book are a little bit confusing at this point because we go from turning on and off our layers to the next step which just says to click to clear census tracts. So let's click on them. But it doesn't tell us where to do this. So I think a few steps got excluded from the book. So I assume we're supposed to be zoomed in similar to how we are with the, the image. And it looks like we're supposed to be down here. And if we click on census track or the track centroids, they will turn off. Um, if you are not familiar with raster data, you can see that it's very angular with all the edges. That's because these are made up of individual cells. Uh, whereas the vector data, which is the lines, points, and polygons, So when you're zoomed back out to the full extent, they want us to once again turn everything on except for our track centroids. Our, let's see, where is it? Um, municipalities and the poverty index. So everything else stays on. Next, we're going to learn about bookmarks. In ArcMap, it used to be up here with like where it would say file, insert, and, and the other things. But now it's here under navigate and you just click on it. And we're going to choose the poverty areas. What's really nice about this compared to the arc map is that you get this little preview. So if we click it, it zooms us to this predefined extent. Another tool that seems to have been removed from ArcGIS Pro that ArcMap had was the zoom in and zoom out. So those functions still exist. It's just you have to use a combination of key and mouse rather than selecting a tool. So you're going to hold the shift key and then you're going to draw a rectangle around here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a box around here. It's going to zoom us in. And I'm going to do that again because they want us to do this until streets appear. I'm just going to do fixed in. Okay, there we go. So now what they want us to do is go back up to the navigate group, click on bookmarks, and choose new bookmark. In this, we're going to give it a name called the McKee's Port Poverty Area. Then you could also give it a description if you wanted to. Then we're going to click OK. Then we're going to go back to bookmarks. We're going to use the Allegheny County one that brings us up to pretty much full extent. Then we're going to go back to bookmarks and you can see that it already has the preview in it. So that's not something you actually have to add to it. It's just something automatically created. So we can click on it and that brings us to where I was. Back in bookmarks, we're going to go to manage bookmarks. This is going to be very useful. There are often times where you might have to re rename a bookmark or possibly even delete one. The book wants us to have these so they're in alphabetical order. So we can just 
click it and drag it until it's below the the A. You don't necessarily have to do this by alphabetical order. You might want to do it for the most used bookmarks up at the top with the least used at the bottom. So we're going to close the bookmarks and I'm going to hit full extent. In the table of contents panel, I'm going to clear the population density checkbox. And I'm going to turn municipalities on. Then I'm going to right click the municipalities to open up the menu. And in here, just like an arc map, you have a context menu where you can choose a number of things and we're going to open up the attribute table. Uh, it's similar to how like arc GIS online is, is where the default is the table appears at the bottom. Whereas in arc map, it normally is defaulted as a floating table. In here, you can see that we only have a few fields. We have object ID, we have a shape, name of the municipality, the shape length. And it's what I do like about this is if you hover over them, they will tell you the little information about the field and not the, necessarily the values, but the field itself. Uh, in many cases, it's very important to know what type of field it is. For this, as you can see, we see numbers in here, but if we hover over it, it's actually a text field. Uh, that can create problems if you're trying to do a join. So being able to just hover over it rather than have to right click and open up properties for a field, this saves you a lot of time. Up at the top, we're going to use the select by attributes tool in the selection group. And you can see over here that it's appearing in this side panel. Uh, down here, you can see that catalog is now in tab with geoprocessing as an option. Now municipalities has already been selected as the layer name. Uh, there are selection types, but seeing that we don't have anything selected already, we're going to keep this one. You're then going to click the add clause and this will pop up and allow us to create an expression. And in this, we're going to change the field to name. We're going to have it equal is to, but you can see down here, there are other options. Is equal to means that it must be an exact match. And here you can choose from values and we're going to choose McKee's Rock. So we're going to go down to the M's and then we're going to click Add. Now we could add more clauses and make this a very complex one. Um, I'm not the hugest fan with this. I prefer the classic SQL. And if you click on this, um, switch to, this is the, the format that you've been looking at. You can also switch to edit SQL mode. And for those that worked with ArcGIS before Arc Pro, this is much more familiar and how they've been doing things. And honestly, I think it's the best way because there are going to be expressions that I think are going to be very difficult using that clause method. So just because it's available, you should still learn SQL um, as soon as possible. But once that's done, you have to come down here and click Run. And it says it has finished. If we look down here, we can see that one of the 130 municipalities has been selected. So I'm going to close the geoprocessing window and I'm going to hit the full extent. Now it's a little difficult to see, but it selected a feature right here. And if we go to the bottom of our attribute table, we can click on the show selected records. And this will give us information uh, granted, there's not much, but we can see the shape area, the, the perimeter, 
the name, and, and everything else. Over in the table of contents, we can right-click municipalities, go to selection. This will open up another context menu, and we can choose the zoom to selection, and that will bring us in to our selected feature. Now we're going to clear our selection. So at the top of the table, if you come down to here, you'll see that there's a clear. Now, for those of you familiar with ArcMap, this is a different icon that you're, than you're familiar with. Uh, and it's also different from what the book is showing. So we're just going to click this. It clears our selection. The blue outline is vanished. We're going to clear the municipalities checkbox to turn it off and select the population density checkbox. Of course, we can't see it because we are zoomed in too much. So if I keep zooming out, we can see that it is one of the larger populated areas. It's very dark and that's the larger population density. So I'm going to close the attribute table. And how you do that in this is you come over here to where the tab is for municipalities and you just click X and that closes it. The Your Turn wants us to search for an FQHC called Bardock's Health Center. So we're going to go up to the select. First I'm going to zoom out and I'm turning off the buffers because those are kind of blinding. And I'm going to go to select by attribute. And I'm going to change the layer name from municipalities to FQHC clinics. I'm going to add a new clause and it gives us the name. So I'm going to set the name as equal to, and then it's in alphabetical order, which is nice. So I can just click on the Bardock one, add this clause and then hit run. And in here, if you hover over this, it will actually give you the result information. I did not know this until now. Um, this is actually very helpful. It will even give you a time that it took to run, which is 0 0.06 seconds, but it will also give you the expression in SQL. So by using the, the clause mode, you can slowly learn SQL. Now, where is it? Well, we're going to have to zoom in because I frankly don't see it. So we're going to right click our FQHL or HC clinic, go to selection, zoom to selection, and it's right here. If I go to selection and zoom to selected, it will do that again. Now, if you don't want to right click and do that zoom to selection, you can always go up here to the navigate and click on the zoom to selection and that will bring us in. And that concludes this tutorial.